you hear me okay? Okay, awesome. Okay, well, this morning's flight, we've got a nice little, uh, one of our little scheduled flights that you've booked, which uh, was one of my favourites, actually. I'm really quite glad you booked it from uh, Gatwick down to Jersey. Yeah. So it's a nice little flight. Um, we're going to have plenty of time to have a chat on the way down there and sort of talk about various different things. Um, in terms of taking you through the cockpit, you probably remember from before, if I was to sit here now and sort of talk you through everything, that would be your session over and we wouldn't even leave the ground. Okay. So I think probably the best thing for us to do is if we get straight into it, uh, let's get straight into um, programming our flight plan and getting the aircraft set up. Okay. Through the course of the flight, you're pretty much going to get to touch absolutely everything in the cockpit and you'll get to know what it, what it all does. Um, okay. So rather than me sit here saying what it does, it's probably best for us to get to that point in the flight where we need it and then you can It'll do, what it, do yeah. what it does. Okay. Um, does that sound okay to you? Yep, yep. Okay, so we've, we're sat on the ground here at um, Gatwick Airport. Um, the runway's kind of directly ahead of us. Uh, it's looking very much as though we're going to be flying out on the westerly runway this morning, which means when we push back, we'll be pushing back to the left and then taxiing out behind that Thompson aircraft and then taking off left to right. Okay. Um, so the first thing that we're going to uh, get involved with is um, this unit here. Now, did you do very much on this when you went to no, Cambridge? I, wouldn't, no, I didn't no, think you would. We just saw a little brief and then sort of idea of, you know, just what we're going to be doing and then yeah. go straight into it. And yeah, I thought so. If they got you sort of just doing takeoffs and landings, yeah, then you probably wouldn't have, you probably I, wouldn't I, have I got never, to, I never got to play with any got of to the, do any uh, of the systems. The okay. Systems All right. Well, we can put that right straight away. So these are called the flight management computers. We've both got one. Uh, they're a bit like the brains of the aircraft. That's probably the best way to think about it. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to use these. Uh, they're twin linked as well, so I can put anything into mine and it'll affect yours. So we're basically these are both interfacing into the same computer. Okay. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to tell the aircraft where we are. So every airport has a four-digit code associated with it, and the code for Gatwick is EGKK. So if you just using your pad here, want to type in EGKK, you'll see it comes down onto this scratch pad here as you're typing it. Then you can put in put that in where it says Ref Airport. That's it. So that's now come up with our. Um, latitude and longitude coordinates of exactly where we are in the world. So that's a good start. The aeroplane knows where we are. So we can now go to route. Now we've still got Gatwick down here, so we don't have to type it again, but this is where we need to tell the aircraft where we're flying from and where we're going to. Okay. So we can put Gatwick in as our origin, and we're flying to Jersey. So the code for Jersey is EGJJ. And that goes in where it says dest, as for destination. Okay. And the um, next thing we're going to do now, let's have a little listen to something called the ATIS, which is the Automated Terminal Information Service. This is going to sound like a little robot voice. It's exactly what it sounds like in real life. Okay. This is going to give us some basic information on the weather and that kind of stuff. Echo, Golf, Kilo, Kilo, Airport Information, Hotel, Zero, Seven, Five, Zero, Zulu, Weather, Wind, Zero, Two, Zero, At, One, One, Visibility, One, Zero, Sky Clear, Temperature, One, Six, Dew Point, Nine, Q and H, One, Zero, One, Five, Advice on Initial Echo, Golf, Kilo, Kilo, Airport Information. Okay, so what I was listening out for there, that probably sounded like a complete load of mumbo jumbo, but... What I was listening out for there was, um, I was listening for where the wind was coming from. So the wind is coming from 0 to 0 degrees, which is kind of um, slightly northeast um, at, um, I think it was 11 knots. So that kind of tells me which runway we're going to be taking off from. Okay. Um, and the other thing I was listening out for, most importantly, was um, something called the QNH. Now that's the local, that's the air pressure setting for today. Yeah. And we need to use that to be able to set our altimeter so that it works correctly. So just down here, you've got a number, 1013. Now the air pressure today is actually 1015. So we need to, I've just set mine actually, but we, we need to uh, get you to set yours. And you do that by just dialing that dial there, probably to the right, until that reads 1015. There you go. Okay. Lovely. Okay, so we're all set. Okay. Um, so the way that the wind is coming from tells me that we're going to be using runway 26 left today. So for runway, let's type in 26L. And then pop that in where it says runway. There we go. Now we can activate that. And then we're going to get a little white light. That's a little bit like an Are You Sure box because we, we don't want to get something as simple as where we're flying to wrong. So it's just a prompt for us to double check. We're going from Gatwick to Jersey, Jersey. via runway 26. So execute that. 
right now we can go to our perf init page which, which is our performance page so the airplane's really quite clever and it's going to do lots of things to help us um, it's going to work out what our takeoff speeds are and all that kind of stuff but in order for it to do that we need to give it a little bit of information and the most important thing we've got to tell it is how heavy we are so in the real world a load master would come in give us a load of sheets of paper telling us what weight of baggage we've got on board average weight of passengers all that kind of stuff um, we haven't got a load master here today so you've got me basically telling okay. you roughly <laughs> what the weight what the weight's going to be so the weight uh, with the amount of fuel we've got on board at the moment would be about um, 56 tons so let's go ahead and type in 56.0 and then put that in where it says GW, that stands for gross weight. Oh. Right, so now what the aircraft's done, we've told it that our gross weight is 56 tonnes. It knows we've got 9.8 tonnes of fuel on board, so it's subtracted the fuel from the weight to give us our zero fuel weight, that's the ZFW. Right. So that's basically the weight of the aircraft, passengers and baggage, less the fuel. Right. Um, so now we know how much we weigh. We've now got to tell it what reserves we're carrying, so that's how much fuel we're going to have left when we get to Jersey, because we need to make sure we've got enough fuel to circle for a period, period of time, time and divert to another airport if we have to. Um, we've got loads of fuel on board. We've got nearly 10 tonnes of fuel. The aircraft's only going to burn, well, only. We'll, it will burn about 2.5 tonnes of fuel an hour. Um, so we're going to have about 7.5 probably say seven tons worth of fuel on board when we land so we've got loads of fuel so if we just type seven and put that in as reserves and then we need to tell it what cost index we're going to use that's a little bit like a um, fuel economy setting so we're going to use a cost index of 80 which is kind of like a middle of the road setting it will give us good performance but also reasonable fuel burn okay lovely right next thing we need to do is tell the aircraft how high we're going to fly now, the aeroplane's already pretty much worked out for us. It thinks we should be flying at around 28,000 feet. Yep. But I don't want us to go that high today. And the reason for that is I don't want you sitting there in a climb. What I want to do is get you flying the aeroplane a bit more. Okay. So we're going to fly a little bit lower. Not okay. much lower, but a little bit lower. Okay. So we're only going to go up to, say, 15,000 feet today. So let's type 15,000 in. Zero, zero, zero it and put that in where it says altitude okay. it'll just give us more time to get you actually flying the aeroplane uh, and then let's press execute and now we can go to this page called n1 limit and we can quickly skip through that to take off right so we're almost there on our on our pre-flight now have you ever heard of these three phrases before v1 vr v2 i've heard of uh, v1 v2 vr i'm not too, too uh, sure what they sure, are sure that one is That's okay so v1 that's gonna, this is all to do with the speeds when we're about to take off. V1 is our point of no return. So when we get to that speed, we're committed to go, go into the air. Even if we've got a problem with the plane, we've got to go up, and then we'll okay. sort it out when we get into the air. And the reason for that is because, simply speaking, we wouldn't have enough ro runway ahead of us to be able to stop. VR is our rotate speed. Now, that's, that could be better, better worded as our takeoff speed. Okay. So that's the point where you're actually going to pull back on the stick, the nose will rotate upwards and we should go up into the air. And V2 is hopefully a speed we're not going to use. That's a safety speed. If we were to have an engine failure just as we're about to take off, then we're going to need to accelerate a little bit quicker to be able to take off with the reduced thrust of one engine. So that's what V2 is. But hopefully we're not going to have that problem this morning. Okay. Um, the aeroplane's about to work all those speeds out for us. It just needs one more bit of information from us which is what degree of flaps we're going to be using for takeoff. Right, okay. So flaps, if you've ever seen on a wing, those are the little bits that come out at the back and they yep. kind of come okay. down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, what they basically do is they're increasing the surface area of the wing and therefore making the wing generate more lift, mm -hmm. which means we can fly slower, okay. which is important when we're taking off and landing because that's when we're going to be at our slowest. So standard flap setting on the 737 is 5 degrees. So if you just want to put 5 degrees of flap in and then put that up where it says flaps, then we'll see that the aircraft's now calculated those speeds. So our point of no return V1, that's 126 Six. knots. Almost immediately after, only one knot faster is our rotate speed. So we're going to hit the point of no return and pull back pretty much at the same, same time. time. So it's going to be a case of you'll hear me say V1, rotate, right. and then you'll pull back. Okay. And if we did have a problem with the engine, we're going to go up to 137 knots, just 10 knots faster. It's not much of a difference, but it does make a big difference. Um, okay, so that's our pre-flight complete.
Okay, okay so far? Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> Jolly good. So now what we need to do is program our little flight plan down to um, uh, Jersey. So what I'm doing here, I'm just adjusting your um, map. So this is your map display. Okay. This is us at the bottom, and this is the, f the direction that we're facing. So at the moment, we're facing almost south. Um, the reason I've done that is so that you can see our flight pan as we uh, as we draw it up. So if we go to departure and arrival, first of all, we need to look at what our departure is going to be from Gatwick. Now, we already know that we're going from 26 left, so we don't need to do anything there. But we now have these things called SIDs with all these funny names. And these are, these are standard instrument departures. So 